Hey everyone. So ML.NET is quite a bit versatile, uh, if, especially if you've seen my other videos on all the stuff that they can do. But not only can you create your own machine learning pipelines, you can also use TensorFlow deep learning models to make predictions. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We'll use a pre-trained TensorFlow model and perform transfer learning within ML.NET. So real quick, I'm in the Microsoft documentation for what we're about to do here. And just a little bit of a graphic here just to show what all this is doing. So when you call ML.NET, uh, you use this TensorFlow package. And what, what that does is that it reads from a pre-trained model that you will need to download and include in your project here. So it reads from that and it does everything in there. And then within ML.NET, it gives you everything you need to do within your C-sharp code. So in the same documentation, it gives you a link to download the inception model, which is what we'll be using. And so I already have a .NET Core console project loaded, and I have a few things in my solution file. I have an images folder, and these images are just of a book, a couple of cups, and a sunflower. And then we have this labels CSV file, which is the path of the image and then the label. And then we only have one cup here because we'll use the other one for a uh, prediction. And we need both the images and the labels file as inputs to this model. So to get started, we need a couple of NuGet packages here. And by the way, if you haven't heard or are not sure what transfer learning is, it basically uses a model that's already been pre-trained to solve uh, a similar problem to what you want. And essentially it just takes that model and reuses parts of it to build the new model that you want. So the inception model is an image classifier. So we're going to use that to classify uh, some more images. So first let me get the ML.NET package. I'm using 1.3.1 .1 here. And then since we're doing TensorFlow, we're going to be reading a TensorFlow model. I need that package as well. And since we're doing dealing with images, I need to do I need to get the image analytics package. There we go. So like usual, we need to get started by creating our ML context. And for our data, we are going to load in the labels file. So we'll just reload from text file. And we need to create an input schema class here. I'll name that image data. And I'll create that in just a bit. And that's going to be labels.csv. And the separator here is going to be a comma. There's no header on it, so the default uh, has header is already false. So I'll create this class here. And these are just have load column. It's going to be two items here. String image path. And then our second item is going to be the label. So next we need to create our pipeline. And it's going to be quite an evolved pipeline here and I'll try to explain everything that, as best as I can. First thing we want to do is we want to do the conversion map value to key transform. What we need to do here is we need to change the label to a label key since the labels are categorical. We need to change them to numerical representations. And next we do the transforms where we load in our images and this comes in from that image analytics package that we downloaded. And I'll map that to a column called input. And then the image folder is going to be images that we have here in our solution. Input call name is going to be the image path. And so I can just use the name of for the image path property that we created on the image data. 
After that, we need to do another transform where we resize the images. And that's going to replace that input output call name that we have up here. And then next we need to do image width and image height. And to help us with a few of those settings here, I'm going to create another class. We do inception settings for the inception model. And this is actually going to be a struct. So it's a value type instead of a reference type that we get with a class. So first is the image height, which would be 224. And then we'll do the same thing for the image width. And then we need a mean value, which we do is 117. And this is all from that documentation page. And I'll, I'll link to that in the description so y'all can follow that as well. And we'll give it a scale of one. And then we do a channels list and set that equal to true. All right, back in our resize image transform here, we're going to use the inception settings to do the, the width and the height of our image that we want to resize to. And the input column is going to be input as well. This is going to be from this transform we input into this transform, but we also output the same name as input. All right, next we need to extract the pixels from the images so we can train on those. So we do this another transform, it's called extract pixels. So the output call name, we're going to continue outputting as input. And then we'll set the interleave pixel colors to that channels list. So we set that to true. And we'll do to, to offset the image using that mean value. All right, so next, we actually load in our TensorFlow model. And I almost forgot, we have this model folder here. And after you download the Inception model, you get these couple of files. All you need are the, the label strings text file and a .pd file. Just move those over and make sure they get copied over when you build. So to load it in, we do context.model.load tensorflow model. And from here, we'll just give it the path of where the model is. This is going to be the pd file. That's the actual model file. And then on top of that load tensorflow model, we need to do score the tensorflow model. And that's going to take in a new array of strings. And what this is, is we're going to output the call name that we get that is from this model file. So the output that we get from there is going to be softmax to preactivation. And there are tools out there where you can pass in this file and you can get the names of the, uh, the actual input and output layers. And in the input, we'll do another array here and we'll just put input since that's what we're giving it from here. And then we'll say add batch dimensions to true. All right. So that's all the, all the things we need to do for the images and the TensorFlow model. Next, we will append on the multi-class classification trainer and we'll do the maximum entropy trainer here. Do the label name as label key since we mapped it to from categorical to a numerical value up here. And we'll give this same call name since this is what comes back from the TensorFlow model. We'll give that as the future column name. And then one more thing to do for the pipeline is that we need to do another transform. We convert map key to value and we'll bring out the predicted label value from the predicted label. All right, that's all for our pipeline. So we create our model from it by fitting with our data. And that creates the model for us. And so we can next is create our image data. And to do that, we can do file read all lines from our label file. And then we use some link here. 
to split all the columns so that separates it all out then next we will for each of those items we'll create a new image data object we get the image path we'll do path dot combine and from here we need to start off at environment dot current directory give it the images path and then it'll be the first item from the split here that's going to be the path from there we need to create a data feed from that image data so we do context data that load from enumerable just do image data and they can infer what type that is next we can create our predictions we do model that transform on that image data feed And then we can create our image predictions. The context data create numerable. And this is gonna be, we need to pass in our kind of prediction schema here. So we already have our input schema, this image data. So let's create another one we call it image prediction. And I'm going to inherit from image data so I can get those properties and then I'll do a float of array float array called score and I'll do a string of predicted label value which is that's the name that we used up here to get the items from the predicted label to the predicted label value and this what this does is that since we map from categorical to numerical up here we're doing the opposite we're mapping from numerical to categorical up here so we can get the string representation of our labels so i do image prediction here then i give it the predictions I tell it to reuse I tell it not to reuse the row objects and ignore missing columns true so next we can evaluate our model see how well it goes we do model that transform on our data our original data here from the label file and to get our metrics we do context uh, multi-class classification that evaluate give it the evaluation predictions give it the label column name of the label key and then a predicted column name of predicted label and with those predictions we can write out the metric that we want to look at generally for image classification or just multi-class classification here we look at the log loss and the log loss needs to be as close to zero for for more accurate predictions so i'll do a read line so it doesn't disappear on me so let's go ahead and run this and see what we get Oh, so instead of saying P B, I put P D. So let's change that and we'll try it again. There we go. We get log loss of 0 0.08, which is not too bad. All right. So to do a prediction, now we can create the prediction function in the context of model that create prediction engine. And it puts the image data and our output the image prediction and we just pass in the model and we can create a single prediction by doing prediction function dot predict and we give it a new image data and we give the image path do path dot combine and we do the same as before we do environment dot current directory images and we'll do that second cup image and then we'll write out the prediction so we we'll do image we'll use path that get file name on the image path that we gave it and that was predicted as 
with the predicted label value, we get the the label that it gets predicted as. And we can say with the score of we can use the score, and that's gonna be remember that's an array of floats, so we just get the max item on that. That's gonna be the score for this predicted label value. So we'll run that again. Yeah, so cup two was predict predicted as a cup with a score of 66%. So there we go. That's how you can use a pre-trained TensorFlow model inside ML.NET to basically use transfer learning to create your own model to do image classification. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.